Jim says, do companies still need a formal intranet? I haven't heard of people using SharePoint on its own for quite some time. Most SharePoint is more behind the scenes in teams. So what is the need for a standalone formal intranet? Well, first of all, I think it's funny because <laughs> it's the background. People were starting to realize finally that SharePoint is behind teams. You know, because that was like the best kept no, secret uh, for the longest well, we time. Don't use SharePoint. You know, <laughs> say it yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> That it's like, what do you mean there's a whole SharePoint site behind the team? Like, yep, there is. But yeah, it's just one of the tools in the toolbox. So I just want to give Tim some kudos for understanding that that's the way it works, which is I, I stopped do adding it into presentations, but I would use like the Marge with the palm olive, like you're already <laughs> soaking in it. You know, like, like I don't, I never use SharePoint. It's like, oh, oh yes, you do. Oh, yes, you, you do. do. Your hands already said, like, I noticed my hands were so soft, covered yeah. in green slime, but soft. Yeah. How <laughs> far back are you going, dude? I mean, I, well, that's what I'm saying. It's, people, I, I'm old. People don't remember that. I do. I it's remember that. Crowd. I'm of that vintage. That. I'm of that vintage. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. I could go on and on with this one, but so, I will defer to the other masters in the room. <laughs> I, I would say that and I think like half of us, uh, you know, have presented on this, which tool to use when topic. Yes. And this comes up all the time. I mean, I had somebody in a session that I was giving at this event uh, at the digital workplace conference down in Melbourne a couple of weeks back. Somebody in the audience asked this during my session of similar question to this and said, look there, I still like, and I shared then the messaging that Microsoft did and they ditched it for a while, but I, I still use it, which is the inner loop, outer loop, you know, way of thinking about that. <laughs> and so you think of, uh, and, and you know, there are organizations that have need that formal structured site, which is where we keep our policies, our documentation. It's where, um, our branding standards are where all, I could go and find forms and, and process and all those things. That's that formal intranet. Teams, and that's that, that outer loop. And even further outside of that loop is the, uh, oh, I know you guys playing the drinking game while I'm talking. <laughs> um, but then you have Viva Engage or formerly known as Yammer, which is that broad outside where sometimes I, it's a, uh, there's an idea I'm looking for help and I don't, it's not a project. It's not a project or product team. It's not a specific group. I don't know where that input is going to happen, but I know it's within the company. And so I want to create a community. I want to throw questions out there where I don't know where the answer is going to come from. Then you have the inner loop, which is really the Microsoft, the Microsoft teams where look, this is my project team. The, the six of us are working on this project for this customer for the next six months, where day in, day out, we're sharing notes and having conversations and meetings, that's that inner loop. So th that's how I explain that, is that some companies realize we don't need that formal structure and they operate entirely within teams uh, and then do things in OneDrive, sharing of, of files that way. Others that need that, that rigor, that structure, um, around the many different divisions to keep, you know, the, it, and so it, it is largely larger enterprises that need that, that have that difference where smart, smaller, more agile companies, you're 50 people, you can probably, I would argue 50, you're starting to need an intranet, but 25 Thanks. people, you can do things and live entirely within email and teams. I, I would have to disagree with that. How many of you cringe when you walk into a client and they have one team for the entire company with a channel for each department? Because now people are, are going to get bombarded with the announcements and everything in Teams and they're going to tune it out like they've done their email because they can't untune from the whole team. And but how do you disagree with what I said? Because I, I agree with you that that's horrible. That's where horrible. people are trying to use it as an intranet when it shouldn't be used that way. Because SharePoint has two primary purposes, communication and collaboration. So I work in the HR department. I'm not going to give you access to my team where I have the employee manual. I'm going to publish that out on a communication site where you can find the only copy. So even though it's a 25 person or less company, there's still a need. Here's where things are built, made, and here's where things are published and shared. 
right? So, Please. so, and you're not going to send that out an email. I need them to be able to go find it and not where I have the gospel copy of it here. Yeah. yeah. So I agree yeah. with everything you said. I don't think that okay. changes what I said. You think you said that people could work in Teams and email versus not having a SharePoint intranet. I think that they can. Okay. Uh, depending on de again, depending on the size of the structure, but that's why <laughs> that's why I said not fifty because even at fifty people in a company, you've got a lot of complexity. Mm -hmm. Size has nothing to do with the complexity of your collaboration and the environmental needs. Uh, there are small teams of if you're a you work for an MSP and there's 12 employees, you probably don't need to have that formal intranet yet. But as you start growing, then you're going to want to have that structure and that exact scenario that you said where it's the difference between what is bread that's being made versus baked and and available yeah. for people to consume. Yeah, I with the. I want people to start with the right um, foundation and grow into it and grow from there, not start them out with bad habits and bad things. So I'm having that same thing with my son's business right now. They're like, we can do everything in teams. I'm like, no, not really. You know, and, and so we started talking through the why, and there's only eight people in this company. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, I see why. Because you, you don't want to start them off with bad habits. Let's start off the right way. If we have the opportunity, let's build it the right way to begin with, right? You have to plan to scale. Uh, I've got a few different sessions, like you mentioned, Christian, that I do around this and 100% agree. You've got content that everybody in the company, whether you're 10, 30, 50, 50,000, everyone needs access to. And, and then you've got content where it's those individual work groups break down and they do that collaboration teams. By default, especially the bigger you get, you're going to have more teams than just standalone SharePoint sites. Absolutely, 100%. Um, but the phrases I tend to use is like, Teams is your company public, right? There's no such thing as public team uh, SharePoint sites anymore, but it's your company public. Maybe if you're small, share your son's business. Uh, maybe they just have one SharePoint site right now and they organize it by library. Okay. It's easy to scale that out when the time comes, uh, but everyone's got the access they need. I'm not saying everyone can edit and create an ad, right? Um, but then Teams becomes that department, project, or group private side. I still consider that part of your intranet, but it's your true collaboration, communication, SharePoint's your publishing, to use the old school SharePoint word, right? So <laughs> y'all need, everyone needs access to it. Everyone goes to the intranet. It doesn't have to be formal or rigid, but it's just out there. We can get to it. And then we do all the, like you said, the gospel, you know, versions of stuff kind of behind the scenes. I'm just curious yeah. about why he asks. He, he says, I haven't heard of people using SharePoint on its own for some time. I know. I, I know. I <laughs> Who does he that? hang out with that he hasn't <laughs> heard of? Just, like, that's not I, something I normally ask. Hang people. out with like, us, Tim. How's your SharePoint yeah. usage going? So I just think it's <laughs> the, funny. The cool um, kids do. Because it used to be that SharePoint was like just such a bad name, and I would get called in <laughs> to make SharePoint something good that yes. maybe I'm kind of wondering. And I'm, I'm from a philosophical level and a marketing level, first of all, teams definitely has dominated the airwaves around marketing. But second of all, like think about it this way. I think Microsoft has massively improved SharePoint in the modern, um, in all the modern stuff that they've done to a point that we've got comment that people are not hearing about SharePoint. I almost wonder if that's a good thing. Right. Oh, stop calling my baby ugly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's a pretty baby now. She's so pretty. Well, but that's so much you you look at the so here's kind of a broader look at the those that you know uh, this makes sense for people that have been in this community for a few years um 10 years ago all when we were still everything was on premises you know all the conversations were around keeping the servers up and healthy and running and performing and all kind of all the sorry microsoft made up word performant um performance. To, to, to keep everything running um and you don't hear those uh, about those kinds of sessions. Now it's evolved into the services side as everything moved into the cloud. But you, what you had then were organizations were like, you know, we've got it 
it's running and it's healthy and it's working. And now it's about scalability. Now it's about adoption. Now it's about, uh, it, you know, architecture, am I, design. Right. Am I efficiently, mm -hmm. I'm automating uh, everything. Uh, and, and so we, we have the luxury of moving away from those conversations. And I think that's to this point, we're not hearing the word SharePoint because it's just working behind the scenes now. It's just running. Um, mm -hmm. But the I, I don't know what the latest data is, like the last six months. Mm -hmm. I think it was in November where uh, Teeper even announced, uh, or it mentioned this in at ESPC, like the number of net new uh, SharePoint sites, it's still growing. Mm -hmm. Like it's not hockey stick growing. I'm talking about independent of teams. Right. Um, you know, like SharePoint is still, people are still going out there and deploying. We and still building. stand up intranets all day long for new clients. Yep. I mean, we, and, and in fact, in fact, to some degree, I have a whole session around, you know, all basically starting with teams. Many people start with teams because they need a communication solution. They need a collaboration solution. And then they come back to us and they say, well, we have teams, but it can't do all these other things. Right. Like we talked about, like what Sherry just said, there's things that are missing. And so we have clients day in day out that we are architecting and designing and creating and building intranets for because there is still that need for all those things that don't exist um out of the box immediately in teams that's not to what teams have built for sharpest tool for the job people use the yep. sharpest tool the best tool well, well, that's why and i've shared this many times before for those of us that were in the room uh, it, it, you know, years, a few years back, what, five years ago, whenever it was, when they announced it, we were at the MVP summit in Seattle and you had about a couple hundred MVPs that were sitting in a room ready for the latest uh, updates about Microsoft Teams, this relatively new thing. I think it had been around, you know, out generally available for about a year, year, year and a half, whatever it was, announcing that, uh, that they were making the all company teams uh, rooms, uh, uh, you know, teams, uh, uh, a thing. They, they, it's like they were all excited about it, and the room boos across the board. People were like, "You just broke what <clears throat> teams? Like this doesn't make sense. That's called an intranet. Like that's like that's not the use case for teams. But it's one of those things where, sorry, I know I'm going sideways on this, but it's one <laughs> one of the things that. Very large customers were like, no, no, we want it. We want this thing. And it's part of what's caused the confusion here. And so I, I again, that's why I go back to the inner loop, outer loop. I said, it's, can you have 5,000? I don't know what the limit, upper limit now is on a team. Can I have 5,000 or should you? 5,000, whatever. Should that, right. You? Like, yes, you can. And those are the ones that I, as an employee, never go into those rooms. They're just useless. It's noise. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that there's a lot of on the the, the community hub or the, the community site for Microsoft, a lot of places I just never go into them because it's just yeah. so much and it's just useless to me. Yeah, that's what Yammer's for. for. All right. that banter, <laughs> that's what Yammer's for. It's not team, mm -hmm. Teams is supposed to be productivity. My this opinion. is what alerts and notifications for are for, guys. <laughs> like, if you think about this in any social media aspect, we do not look at every post on the interwebs. Nobody can read them all. I know. I think I've seen people try. But you can't. This is what this is what curating your feed is all about. If you architect things correctly, you, you, you have two issues. One is permissions and two is notifications. If permissions are set up properly and your notifications and feed is curated properly, the rest doesn't matter. Yeah. You're talking about my Reach my sister. Yes. Modern <laughs> collaboration architecture for the win. Yes. Yes. Tim, you open up a can of worms, buddy. You're so passionate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I heard the word yammer and I threw up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's engaged. It's not a That's, yammer anymore. It's a it's an engage now. Yeah, it's is an it? engage. Yeah. Oh, no engage. more yammer? No, it's gone. It's oh. been rebranded. It is part it's Viva Engage now. Oh, okay. Well, Yammer, I formerly have the known vintage. I love this rebrand. Like, like, formerly known like, as Yammer. I love this rebrand.